Emily with Mid-Columbia Fisheries Enhancement Group, and we are already on week seven of our salmon series. This week we are going to be learning about climate versus weather. So to recap what we have been learning, we've learned the salmon life cycle. We learned at the middle of their life cycle, they swim through the watershed and out to the ocean where they eat as much as they can. They swim back up the watershed using their sense of smell. We've also learned that we are really closely related to the ocean in the sense of uh, the water cycle. So we learned that the sun warms the water in the ocean, which makes it evaporate, turn into condensation, which are clouds, and condensation in the clouds give us precipitation in the form of rain, snow, sleet, and hail. Last week we learned that the chemistry of the ocean is changing in a process called ocean acidification from excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And this week we're going to dive a little bit more into what the ocean can do for us and talking about weather and climate. So first off, what is the difference between weather and climate? So weather is day-to-day -day variation of the atmosphere conditions locally. So weather is what is happening now. It is predicted by temperature, humidity, precipitation, cloudiness, visibility, wind, atmospheric pressure. So meteorologists can predict the weather by looking at all those factors and determining what is going to happen. So then what is climate? So climate is a statistics of weather over time. So like 30 years over time. And that includes things like seasonal cycles, extreme events, and year to year variation. So different regions can have different climates. Climates tell us how much it usually rains, when we usually get the rain, how much snow we usually get, average temperatures during our seasons, and stuff like that. And your climate is affected by your altitude or high, how high up you are. So if you're in the mountains, it's usually colder, kind of like we talked about the water cycle and where precipitation falls. It also has to do with your latitude. So the closer you are to the equator, the warmer it is. It has to do with your geography. So if you're by a large body of water, you're going to have more humidity or moisture. And if you're in the desert, the opposite, you're going to have much less humidity and moisture. And also about your topography which is like the landscape. So maybe it's the mountains and the valleys all together. So sometimes mountains can block wind and valleys can spread wind out pretty easily. So, so weather tells us what to wear and climate tells us what to have in our closet. So the weather today is telling me that it's okay for me just to wear a regular long sleeve sweater, but the climate tells me that in my closet I should also own a snow jacket and maybe a pair of shorts too because it could be really hot in the summer and in the winter it can snow a whole bunch. So if I asked you how warm you think it'll be on March 1st, 2040 in Ellensburg, Washington, do you think you could do it? You might say no right away, but do you think that it's going to be colder than negative 20 degrees? No. Do you think it's going to be hotter than 120 degrees? No. So that's already using your climate knowledge to predict. So what scientists can do is they could look at historic data. So they could look at the last 30 years of data every day the temperature, or not every day, every year the temperature on March 1st, and they can make an average prediction of what it will be. So I bet a good guess would be between 35 degrees and 60 degrees. It's a big range, but we can still narrow it down, and it's definitely not 120 to negative 20, right? So that's using our collective to statistics of the weather data to predict the climate. So now we can kind of talk a little bit about how that can kind of connects us to the ocean and then Ellensburg too. So Ellensburg climate is known for being windy, but why is it so windy? So air moves from areas of high pressure to low pressure. The air over the Pacific Ocean is cool and dense and has high pressure. As it moves from west to east over the Cascade Mountains, it is compressed through the Snoqualmie Pass and the air expands and warms openly in the low pressure system of our valley and that movement is what causes that wind. So we talked about the topography, right? So we are pushing air over a nice big open ocean, right? So then we're rising the air and then we're compacting it through Snoqualmie Pass. It goes through, it squeezes through. The pressure changes when we turn into the Ellensburg Valley and that's where that gust of wind comes out of because of the topography. So it's using climate science to predict when our windy season usually is, which is in spring, but then a meteorologist can predict the weather by looking at the pressure changes on that day-to-day -day or even hour-to-hour -hour basis to know when it's going to be windy and how windy it's going to be on that exact day. So now we are going to do an experiment where we can predict the weather using air pressure. So a barometer is what measures air pressure. And on the next clip, we are going to build our own barometer and we are going to measure the pressure changes throughout the week and see if we can predict the weather. 
So there's in the link in the description, there's going to be a link to the Mid-Columbia Fisheries website where you can find the data sheet and the printed instructions on how to build the barometer. So I'm doing a voiceover of the recording, so hopefully my voice will match up with the video. If it doesn't, I apologize. So we're going to be building a barometer. A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. The earth is covered by a layer of breathable air called atmosphere. Air has weight and presses down on earth and everything in it. Barometers help meteorologists predict weather because atmospheric pressure can indicate weather changes. If the pressure drops, this means a low pressure system may enter the area, bringing clouds, wind, and storms. If the pressure rises, this means a high pressure system will come, bringing clear skies and dry air. So you're going to need a ruler. We're going to need um, a clear plastic cup or a glass that can support a ruler. We're going to need a clear straw. We're going to need chewing gum. And we're also going to need tape and some water and food coloring is optional. And so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to take your ruler and your straw and you're going to tape the plastic straw to the ruler so that one end is lined up with the half inch mark on the ruler. And I taped it in two places on the ruler to make sure that it was extra secure. And so next what you're gonna do is you're going to place that ruler inside of the cup so that the bottom of the ruler is flat on the bottom of the cup and make sure you put in the end that has the gap in between the ruler and the bottom, or the, the gap between the straw and the bottom of the cup. And then tape the ruler to the side of the cup to make sure it's secure and not going to fall over. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to fill the cup with three quarters of the way full with water. And this is where I used food coloring just so that we can see the water a little bit better and fill it three quarters of the way up. Just like that. So once your cup is filled up three quarters of the way full, you are going to take your chewing gum or your clay after it's already been chewed up, if it's the gum, don't chew your clay. And you're gonna plug the top of the ruler with the clay or with the you're going to plug the top of the straw with your gum so that way no air can leave or enter the system so that way we can be able to accurately measure the pressure changes. So once you do that, you're going to want to empty the cup so that the water is only halfway full. But when you're doing this, you have to be careful that the bottom of the straw does not leave the water. Otherwise, we'll get an air in there and we won't have an accurate reading. So what I like to do is I like to turn the cup so that I'm kind of pouring out the ruler side so that we can make sure that the bottom of the cup stays in the deepest part of the water and just pour it out so that the cup is only halfway full of water. Just like that. So now we can see that the water level inside the straw is different than the water level inside the cup. If we can see that clearly, the water level inside, if we measure it against the ruler there, that is at three inches, and then you can see what, how different it is compared to the top of the water line of the container. So now you're gonna keep a daily record of the height of the water in the tube using the ruler. So the water level in the tube will rise and fall as atmospheric pressure changes. When atmospheric pressure increases, air pressure on the surface of the water in the container will cause the height of the water in the tube to rise. When atmospheric pressure decreases, there is a low pressure on the surface of the water in the container, so the height of the water in the tube falls. Remember that decreasing atmospheric pressure usually indicates that a low pressure area is approaching. This often brings clouds and rain, and an increasing atmospheric pressure often indicates fair or nicer weather coming our way. So we're gonna monitor this every day, record the height of the water in the tube, and this way we can hopefully be able to predict, predict the weather before it happens.